Here's what Salt Lake's talking about. This weekend is the Kilby Block Party, potentially our biggest local music festival ever. And as we all get ready to lace up, hydrate, and head down to the fair park, let's take the opportunity to answer one of our most listener-raised questions. What are the ground rules of concert etiquette? How do I be a good fan? It's Thursday, May 11th. I'm Ali Vallarta, and this is CityCast Salt Lake. Andrea Racine, you are one half of the band Mitochondria, which you are the voice of the CityCast Salt Lake theme song, which I think means that you are actually the voice of CityCast Salt Lake, not me. I don't think so. (laughs) You're the voice. I can't believe it's taken this long to have you on the show, given that you're technically on the show every single day. Well, thank you for having me. You are also heading up artist relations for the Kilby Block Party. I have to ask, like, this is a huge event, something Salt Lake hasn't really seen the likes of before it came around. What's your biggest anxiety ahead of the weekend? This is one of the largest events I've ever worked personally. And I think the biggest anxiety is really just... There's so many moving pieces at all times when it comes to live events and festivals that something is always forgotten. You know, something I maybe should have done like three weeks ago. I'll remember on Friday when gates open and it's like, how do I accomplish this and get this done today? Luckily, the people I work with are amazing and very supportive. So a lot of times when I'm just frantically telling them to do something without asking questions, they are happy to do so. I think that's the hardest thing is just like keeping track of three full days of music and we have like, you know, 50 some bands coming out and I talk to all of them and make sure they're happy. And that's a lot of people to talk to. So how many people are you all expecting? We're looking at around um, 25,000 a day. So it's, it's big. It's a lot. I think it depends on how the weather plays out, but if it's anything like it is as we're talking, I think it'll be pretty busy. Okay. We have you here today on one of the busiest weeks of your life, (laughs) because one of the things that we get listener emails about really often is concert etiquette. Mm -hmm. And I feel like as someone who works in the industry, both putting on shows and being on stage, you are equipped to lay down some ground rules. So let's waste (laughs) no time. Like, let's just lay it out. Like, what are the ground rules of concert etiquette? I think... One of the more important things is respecting and listening to the staff that's on site at a show, whether it be a festival or if you're at Kilby Court and there's, you know, 20 people in the room with you. um, Right. The staff is there to make sure that everything goes smoothly and everyone, you know, stays safe. And if they ask you to do something, if they tell you to move, like they're not trying to be mean, they're not trying to ruin your fun. They're truly just trying to make sure that like things go off as they're meant to. And I think, you know, it's important to respect them. I mean, you should respect staff every single place where that you are, no matter (laughs) where you are. But I think um, at a show, particularly because live events, like I said, have so many moving parts. And, you know, our number one concern is just like making sure things happen and stay safe. So yeah, listen to the staff that are there. It is weird how there's like this direct relationship between how drunk someone is and how (laughs) assured they are that they know more than the staff on site. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. (laughs) It's that confidence. It's the beer confidence. It's fine. The beer confidence. Yeah. That's a good one. Okay. What else? I also think respect the other people that are in the show at the show with you and don't push your way to the front and get mad at people who are in front of you because those people have probably been there since an hour before we open doors, if not more. I've seen people waiting outside at like 10 a.m. for a show the doors are at 7 p.m. So those people are committed and they have been really trying to get to the front of that stage and they've been there all day. And I think like respect that. Don't push them out of the way. I think all of this depends on the genre of music that you're listening to and like where you are. Obviously, etiquette at a hardcore show is very different than etiquette at an acoustic singer songwriter show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, read the room. If there's a mosh pit and everybody's moshing, by all means, you're allowed to like push around people. But yeah, even then, there's a limit. There have been times at a concert when I'm the friend who's 
being pulled to the front by another friend <laughs> and like kind of whipping your head around and apologizing to everyone like, sorry, excuse me, sorry. And then there've also been times when I'm the friend that's like pulling someone else to the front. What I'm saying is I've pushed my way to the front before. I'm, I've done this. Listen, I've probably done it in my life as well. I'm not exempt. For some reason, I feel like when you're outside too, like in my mind, I'm like the rules about like who's at the front and who's in the back. As soon as we take the roof off of the building, suddenly I'm like, it's different. <laughs> I understand. Listen, one year I went to Bonnaroo and literally fell asleep in front of the stage because it was the only shaded space. <laughs> and that's the only reason I was at the front of the stage. I didn't care that much about the band. I just happened to wake up and the crowd had formed around me. Wow. <laughs> Every experience is different. Outside, a lot more goes, it feels like. I like to think you were at like the offspring or something. <laughs> like it was like a really heavy crowd and you were just snoozing. Okay, a big one that I think probably what people mean when they email us and say, can you do a show about concert etiquette is talking. A concert's not a movie, but also they're not that different. What are the rules around talking? Just a good rule of thumb is probably if you're in the front five rows and a band is playing, don't talk. I think this depends on the genre of music. There are much louder shows than others. But I think, you know, for the most part, if you're in the back corner having a beer, chilling with your friends, I don't think there's anything wrong with talking. But I do think it's, it's like a gal and a guitar and she's just singing some tunes and you're just chatting the whole way. I do think um, I think that's a little rude. But again, I've been shushed. I've had the experience of talking during the show and I was the bad concert goer at that one. And uh, it was a very quiet show and I did not know the music very well. And the people who did know the music were not not pleased. But I was embarrassed. I don't want to be shushed again. It doesn't feel good. So did you weave your way like away from that person? Yes. I actually think I went to the patio on at Urban Lounge because I was like, I'm going to keep talking and no one will shush me outside, which is a great alternative, you know? Right. If you're at a show and there's there's always somewhere you can get away that's not in the crowd, no matter what venue you're at, go to that place where there's less people. Unless I feel like you're like, I love this song. Yeah. If you're like, this is my favorite song. Absolutely. But also, this goes hand in hand with that. Don't sing louder than the band. Okay. Uh, that was going to be my next question because... Have you ever been on stage and heard someone singing so loudly along to you that you're like, wait a minute? I have not heard it too loud. We mitochondria, we mostly play like upbeat dance music. Mm -hmm. The more noise people are making, the more fun we have. I saw Vanessa Carlton recently, you know, iconic. She's a superstar. Everyone was singing along, but there was maybe, you know, a few people a little too loud. Yeah. And I get it. It's been your favorite song for 20 years. You want to sing along, but... Be quieter than Vanessa, you know? Be quieter than <laughs> Vanessa Carlton. Yeah, that is a good, that's just a good rule of thumb in life. <laughs> Be quieter than Vanessa Carlton. She has the spotlight. Okay, what else is on the list? Anything else in terms of concert etiquette that comes to mind? I mean, I think one big thing, and this probably applies more to festivals than club shows and concerts, I would say, but always being respectful of the artists themselves. I think a lot of people get really hyped on if you're walking around Kilby Block Party and you happen to see your favorite musician walking around through the crowd, mm -hmm. just don't forget that they're a person. And I think a lot of times we treat celebrity like they're not people, but they are. They're probably walking through the crowd for the same reason you are. They want to hear the music. They want to, you know, drink a beer and enjoy the day. And I don't think there's anything wrong with saying hi, I loved your set, I love your music, et cetera, to an artist, to a band, whomever. But I do think be respectful of their time. Don't monopolize their time. They're also just there to hang out. And don't be mean. If you don't like a band and you see them walking around, don't be rude to them either. The don't hijack their time point is so important I think also because like just because an artist is famous doesn't mean we're paying them to be on the clock 24 7 like you know what I mean like that it feels like we've decided that's the equation with fame but it's not quite right like when they're on stage their job is to perform for you when that performance is over it is not their job to perform for you anymore that could mean not being amused by you <laughs> Most artists, in my experience, are very kind, polite people that when talking to fans, they never really shut 
the conversation down. But I think a lot of people take that as, oh my God, my favorite artist loves me and just wants to talk to me all day. And for the most part, they're happy to say hello, but they don't want to talk to you all day. They want to go hang out with their friends also and go enjoy the show. They just don't want to be rude. Okay, this is like a really silly question, but it's it's one that I can't resist asking you again because you like spend time on stage performing. <laughs> I feel like it's so often, especially in dancey crowds, that everyone in the audience wants to get the artist's attention in some way or like shout towards the stage. What are like the best shouts and the worst <laughs> shouts? Like <laughs> what should we be shouting that's like energizing, but like what should we not shout? I'm all about shouting some woos. I I think woo girls are fun. And I think that it hypes up the whole audience. Everybody wants to woo and scream along. There's not really a bad time to just cheer and shout and let it out. I do think there's probably some bad things to shout. There have been experiences, not for me being on stage, but in an audience or working with a band where you hear inappropriate stuff getting shouted from the crowd, like, you know, sexualizing the artist. Things like that, which I would say just generally avoid. I mean, you don't need to like holler and tell someone you think they're really hot and they should take their shirts off. Like, it's just inappropriate. Would you say that just like someone working at the grocery store? Probably not. So don't tell it, say it to somebody working just because they're on stage. Is it most commonly like men sexualizing women on stage and shouting things? Or is that like not necessarily how it plays out? That definitely happens, but I honestly think a lot more times it's men who are the artists being sexualized more just because I think there's less of a stigma towards Mm. the sexualization of men as a whole. Like women, it's like this is like a wildly large conversation and, you know, an Mm oversimplification on my end. But like there's so much that goes into like discussing objectifying women and the sexualization of women across culture. And it definitely happens all the time. But I think a lot of people, especially like if you're like an an indie hipster music crowd, like people aren't going to take well to that. Right. And I think there's much less of that, like defense of male celebrities, whether they be musicians or athletes or are like actors. It's, culturally more acceptable to sexualize them and that doesn't make it any better right right, to do, right just because there's less of a stigma towards it i might be discussing this completely incorrectly but that's just from my experience i've certainly been in shows before where like women in the audience were screaming at like a guitar player to take off their shirt or whatever like everyone just gets hype and it's like well wait a minute like That's not the social contract here. Like, Mm -mm. the agreement is we bought a ticket for them to play their guitar. Like, this is not Magic Mike. Yeah. (laughs) You're at the wrong show. Magic Mike (laughs) would be fun, but that's not that's not where we are right now. If it was Magic Mike, go for it. (laughs) You know, Uh do you have any horror stories from being on stage from like bad audience behavior? You or your sister? I don't from being on stage, but my sister, Katya, the other half of Mitochondria, who's also in a group around town called Pixie and the Party Grass Boys. uh, I've heard of them. Oh, have you heard of them? They're just a little old band. Nobody really knows. (laughs) She told me a tale of uh, one time she was playing a show and they uh, they were doing a cover of... Um, that Venga Boys song, I think. Uh, we we like to party. We like to party. And they had already played it in their set, and a very intoxicated fan came late to their set. And between every pause, whether it be between songs or like during a solo, he was just shouting out, "We like to party," wanting them to play it. Uh, but they had already played it, <laughs> so. Oh, my God, that's so frustrating. (laughs) Continuously was requesting a song that he had just missed by showing up to the show late. So if you show up to the show late, don't ask for a song because they maybe played it first. Again, back to Vanessa Carlton. She played, I think she played A Thousand Miles or what? She played one of her biggest hits first. And then everyone who came a little late missed the biggest hit. It's like, you never know. Be on time. Be on time or be late and be quiet. Yeah. If you're late, just hang out in the back. Don't push your way to the front. Yeah. And enjoy the show. Okay. Before I let you go, I do want to ask you to rank Salt Lake audiences on a scale of 1 to 10. And again, this is for all the people that I feel like think of us as being poorly behaved audiences. You've been on both sides of it. 10 being like, we're divine, 
dream audience. Everyone wants to play here. One being like, we are the sloppiest. <laughs> it makes booking harder for all of the different companies in town. Okay. So for my experience on stage, I would say a 10, but that's also because I play in a little local band and, you know, half of our audiences are like my friends. So I love having them there, Mm -hmm. but I would, I would rank them high. I I would say across the board, like an eight, like a seven and a half or an eight. Cause I do know from a lot of touring bands, I, we do get feedback that like people are just always really, really hyped when they come through. People buy a lot of merch here. They get, they're really engaged and they really like to like enjoy the music. I can say though, I have a friend, uh, a good friend who's in a touring really hardcore show band. And he said that um, uh, regularly the scariest and craziest shows that he plays throughout his tours are Salt Lake. And I don't mean scariest in like, he's afraid. It's just like, wow, those kids are really moshing. Those are real hardcore kids. So depending on how you rank that, that might be like a 10 too, because they're really committed. You got to read the room. I would say on average, like an eight. I think we're, I think we're a good, a good place. We're passing. B's and C's get degrees. <laughs> Andrea Racine, one half of the band Mitochondria and artist relations manager for the Kilby Block Party. I will see you at the Kilby Block Party this weekend. I'll be there. I'll be qu- I'll be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be quiet. No, it's a festival shout. I'll be I'll be screaming woos. Just wooing. If you have FOMO about the Kilby Block Party this weekend, it's not too late. There are tickets available at KillBeeBlockParty.com. Gotta warn you, they're not cheap, but they're there. You'll also find schedules and details. If you are making a transit plan, I'd love to remind you that the tracks stop right in front of the fair park. Please do not drink and drive. Also, please wear a sunscreen and a hat. And if you aren't going to Kilby, I wish you a beautiful weekend of chilling on patios or in your friend's backyard. And maybe I'll see you next weekend at the Living Traditions Festival in front of the library, which I have to say is honestly my personal favorite Salt Lake Festival because downtown basically turns into an international food hall for three days. So plan to attend that and eat your heart out. That is all for us today here on CityCast Salt Lake. We will be back tomorrow morning with our Friday News Roundup. But I'm going to play you out of here with a longer segment from our beautiful theme song by Andrea's band, Mitochondria, because it's so good. And you only get snippets on our show. 